You're watching Zoo Tours, the channel that takes you on a virtual field trip to the zoo. If you have ever had the pleasure of going to the Detroit Zoo, chances are your most memorable moments came from what the zoo calls the world's largest penguin attraction or the largest polar bear complex in America. However, there is a third part to this place that put their name on the zoo enthusiast map, the National Amphibian Conservation Center. If you've ever stepped inside a reptile house, there's usually a small section dedicated to amphibians, but Detroit didn't think that was enough. In 2000, they claimed to have built the first major exhibit solely dedicated to amphibians in an American zoo, devoted to teaching visitors about their metamorphosis, evolution, and importance. Before we explore what the Wall Street Journal dubbed as Disneyland for Toads, if this is your first time here, please hit those like, sub, and bell buttons so you can officially be a part of this tour group. When you're finally dragged out of the Penguin Conservation Center, those dropped jaws will eventually turn into smiles. This wetlands theme starts with river otters and beavers that probably don't actually exist. Click on the card above if you want to know what I mean. Now before you get to them, you're going to want to take a left into Amphibaville. And before you get to the Conservation Center, there's an archway to the Wetlands Boardwalk Trail. It's not really a traditional man-made exhibit. It's a two-acre sanctuary to the Michigan Wetlands Wildlife, so you really never know what you're going to find lurking under or on top of these lily pads. Now, if that doesn't give you some sort of appreciation for the marshlands ecosystem, then hopefully the Conservation Center will. The amphibians themselves, along with the zoo's efforts to save them, should be the thing that grabs your attention the most. And I never thought I'd say this before, but the tile work around the building definitely does deserve some praise too. While I've heard that there are possibly hundreds of species behind the scenes, there's nearly 40 on display that you can learn about. The Emperor Spotted Newt lives in the mountains of Iran and have this need to migrate and follow any limited source of water they can find when the seasons change. Anatolian Newts, only found in the mountains of Turkey, breed in streams after the snow melts, but will stay on land through the remainder of the year. Both of these species are threatened by habitat loss and climate change. Our next slimy friend provides a challenge to all zoo visitors. Let's just say that it's tough to say their name without at least smirking a little. The Lake Titicaca Frog can breathe underwater through their wrinkled skin, but that water needs to be cold and highly oxygenated in order to survive. Other than a lot of zoos and aquariums these days, these now popular frogs can only be found in Lake Titicaca on the border of Bolivia and Peru. They are endangered due to pollution, unnatural predation from an introduced species of trout, and of course you can't forget about humans that love to hunt them. For once, it's such a nice change to see a good amount of space given to axolotls, a beautiful salamander that spends their entire lives in water. Those feathery appendages behind their heads are actually gills. They keep this larval characteristic all the way into adulthood. This is actually a condition known as pedomorphosis. This amphibian center has animals that are so still sometimes that people think they're not even alive, but it also has a display case of animals that look like they used to be alive, even letting you compare the anatomy of a bird to an amphibian. Before you actually walk into the building, you might notice a pond that sits right next to its windows. It's supposed to look like it's connected to this open-topped tank that's on the inside. 96.5% sure it used to have sunfish, but it was nothing but water on my last visit. Like everyone, I'm not one to care for an empty exhibit, but even without anything in this pond, I still think it serves its educational purpose. If you happen to come across a small frog that's colorful and looks poisonous, good chance that you just found a mantella. There are 16 existing species, all found in Madagascar, that range in reds, oranges, greens, and yellows. 
a lot of frogs rely on their non-vibrant colors for camouflage, and or to make it hard for some predators, they'll just only come out at night. Mantellas are aposomatic, meaning they have colorful skin, which is a way they can let everyone know that they are poisonous. So they don't need to be nocturnal, and in a way, their colors and visibility are key to their survival. Before you take a seat on a lily pad, do the frogs a favor and pull out your wallet because you're encouraged to feed this statue your coins and bills to help fight deadly diseases that are wiping out amphibians in the wild. Next to that is a very large space with a very large species, but no matter their size, they are never easy to find. The Eastern Hellbender. You know why I love these snot otters so much? Because they have so much personality with just a blank stare. Much like gills of a fish and like the titicaca frog, they have loose folds of skin on the sides of their body that absorb oxygen, so they are completely aquatic. Hellbenders do have working lungs, but like PETA, they're practically useless. In fact, it's believed their only function is to give this salamander a little buoyancy. To answer the question that you've been thinking about since I've said it, what does Hellbender mean? Their name makes so much sense and so little sense at the same time. The truth is, no one actually knows how they got their name, but it is speculated those who discovered the salamander first were so horrified by their appearance, it was like looking at a creature that emerged from the depths of hell. The fourth section hops off with a cave feature that makes you bend over quite a bit so you can see horned frogs and blind salamanders. However, the sign strictly says this is for kids only. This episode's conservation spotlight goes to a frog that's also actually becoming pretty popular. The Panamanian golden frog is threatened with extinction thanks to good old-fashioned habitat destruction, illegal collection to the pet trade, and disease that is eliminating them and other amphibians around Central America. The zoo's sign for this golden frog diverts you to Project Golden Frog, an international collaborative effort to prevent their extinction. The many zoos around the world are part of this, including Detroit, creating assurance populations like this one that will hopefully one day be released into their natural range. While Detroit staff regularly travels to Panama to assist in these efforts, you can do your part by donating to Project Golden Frog through the comment section below. In a world filled with poison dart frogs, be more like the Mimic Frog. They're cute, colorful, and about the size of a thumbnail. I thought with a name like that, they would look like but not be poisonous. But turns out they're just a little less poisonous than most dart frogs. As is the Smoky Jungle Frog. If you touch it, you can get a rash, stinging sensations, and worst of all, sneezing. Or if you're a predator and you try to eat them, you probably will die. If you're disappointed that open top tank was empty, don't worry, they have a couple more. African clawed frogs are on the left. My old footage says a lungfish was on the right, but my new footage says they made way for the aforementioned sunfish. People may describe this zoo as a little monotonous, but there are a few instances where they really outdo themselves and other zoos just don't compare. This is a room, actually a borderline shrine dedicated to the Japanese giant salamander, the second largest salamander in the world. The zoo has been home to three males and two females since 1999. They used to be displayed where the hellbenders are now, but moved into their own section a couple of years back. And whoever designed this really made something special. It could be an attraction entirely on its own. They tried their best to hit the limit with attention to detail, even making sure that the backside of the viewing didn't have a single dull spot. This is almost a case where the exhibit is almost too good because the salamanders were very difficult to find. And when I did find one, they didn't really show much. And they can get five feet long. In case you miss out, there is a life-size model on the rock bench. Since this footage doesn't really do its size justice, here's a shot giving you an idea of just how big they are compared to your cell phone. If you're ready to click on the next video, not so fast my friends because I have a few more I want to show you. Again, habitat destruction has sent the striped newt population on the decline, but the Detroit Zoo helps the recovery of the species by hatching and raising baby newts and releasing them into the wild. 
photographers may need a macro lens to get a good picture of them. The Kihansi Spray Tug is only native to a certain mountain in Tanzania. Their entire natural environment is limited to a spray zone created by the Kihansi Falls. The mist was keeping them healthy up until around the year 2000 when the flow of the water was diverted and reduced the water falling by 90%. On top of that, they had to deal with disease during the dry season and went extinct in the wild by 2009. When this exhibit opened, the Detroit Zoo began their own breeding program with wild-caught toads. Like all species, amphibians play a critical role in nature as predator and prey. They eat pests, they control diseases, and since their skin is so vulnerable to droughts and toxic substances, their health helps us determine the ecosystem's health. Every zoo claims they're all about conservation, but it seems like most of them either don't do enough to preserve threatened species or simply just don't display their efforts enough to the public. The Detroit Zoo's National Amphibian Conservation Center alone accomplishes both and once again shows why zoos are so important to nature. So it's no surprise at all why the AZA awarded this building with top honors for exhibit design. And that will wrap it up for this episode. Please stay tuned for the next one. See if you can answer this trivia question. And thank you all for watching Zoo Tours.